In this wired world, media plays an ever more important role in our interconnected lives. There are traditional forms of media like newspapers, TV, radio, and printed books, and more recent developments such as email, ebooks, online games, and apps. This flow of information has improved lives in many ways, but also comes with many challenges. There are now more than 4.2 billion internet users worldwide, and each year, companies spend large sums of money on internet advertising. It is easy to become overwhelmed by this if we don't develop the skills to navigate our way through the oceans of information that surrounds us in our daily lives. Media can be filled with the attitudes and opinions of others, and messages can often lie hidden beneath the surface of what we see and hear. It is important that we avoid passively accepting these messages and instead learn to think carefully and critically about the media we consume. We need to develop the skills to read the media rather than just absorb it. We need to develop media literacy. To do this, we must purposefully assess the messages we are exposed to, to think critically about them rather than just idly accept them. We need to consider new information we encounter carefully by asking these five important questions. Question one, who created the message? When we identify who has created the message, we begin to understand that messages are not natural. They are constructed. Understanding this gives us the distance to begin to see these messages more clearly. Question two, what techniques are used to capture our attention? Now that we understand that messages are made, we need to look at how they are made. We can examine how color and size are used, how light and shade, sound and silence are used to appeal to our senses. Question 3. How might different people interpret this message? Here, we recognize that we are more than just passive receivers of information. By asking this question, we attempt to step outside our own perspective to explore multiple viewpoints, building respect for others in the process. Question 4. What points of view, lifestyles, or values are expressed in, or left out of, this message? When making a message, the author makes choices about what to keep in and what to leave out. These decisions reflect the author's values and attitudes, no matter how subtly. Question 5. Why is this message being sent? This question examines the motivation of sending the message in the first place. It goes beyond the idea that the media is there just to entertain and inform to ask, who benefits from this message? These five questions will help provide the necessary foundations to think critically about the media we engage with to distinguish clickbait from reliable research, and to separate sponsored content from real news. Asking these questions won't solve all the problems facing us as media consumers, but they will provide us with a solid starting point for engaging confidently and dealing competently with the media-rich world around us.